Hey guys, so today I'm going to make an example out of a card that the regular edition is 25 cents. This is a card that already has eight different versions of it. Five non-foil and three foil versions. So let me repeat this again. This card is not an old card. This card has, quote, never been reprinted before. It is a card that came out in Throne of the Eldrin, which if you remember, is not that long ago. So why did this card have eight different versions of it? <laughs> it's uh, getting to my bigger discussion that Magic the Gathering, especially newer cards, are no longer collectible. It's no longer a collector's game. And I realized that in Throne of the Eldrin. I was skeptical. I held back a very serious financial discussion on this because I wasn't sure. And any good financier, and this is true for any YouTuber, they are not going to tell you unless they're out of harm's way, which I am now. I have the Magic Cards. It's not a secret. I've told you guys I sold 70% of my collection, maybe more. I kept my Filias. I kept my Modern decks that were already completed. I kept Commander decks. I even sold, I had 22 commander decks. Most of them were being sold to me by people who just needed money for rent or, I mean, I owned a store, a retail physical store at one time. So collections would come in probably two to three collections a day. And typically it would just be somebody's EDH deck or someone's modern deck or somebody's trade binder or something like that. So I had a lot of EDH decks. And I sold 12 of them to a friend. So I still get to use them. But nonetheless, I don't get to own them, which is a little disappointing. But I kept dual lands. I kept anything that I felt would be relevant in EDH because I really still enjoy EDH. I still enjoy standard. Just not paper standard. Like, it's insane that this rare that normally sells for 25 cents and the orig the regular foil sells for 49 cents on Card Kingdom, one of the most expensive places to buy cards from, that there's a need or a desire to have eight different versions of a standard card that was just released. Like, think about... No, I really want you to think about how silly that sounds. This is a standard card a standard rare, recently released from, I mean, Pharos and now this, so it's the, not the most recent set, but it is a very recent set, and it has eight different versions of itself. That's insane. How is anyone supposed to treat this as a collector's game? Because it's not, and, and that's okay. That's okay, but the ability to speculate on this card is zero. Even the ability to sell the card, you have eight versions of one card. <laughs> and it's only been, what, four months as of the recording of this video? And you've already, I mean, I'm going to show you all eight versions of it in case you don't believe me. But yeah, some of them have different artworks. Uh, it's the extended art and the extended foil art. and It's just like so insane. How can you be a collectible card game? So first of all, you can be a trading card game without being collectible, right? Um, you could be something like um, where the secondary market has no value, and this is where we're trending. And even Rudy from Alpha Investments believes this. Uh, he's still buying things, but again, he's buying, what, BGS cards, 9.5 for $29. It costs $20 to $25 to grade a card, and then you have to wait anywhere between, you know, depending on who you're, what Discord you're in. I, I do Discord, so I I will be guilty. I do sports cards, and I do sometimes grade my sports cards. Um, I tried to grade Pokemon cards, but then I just got frustrated because I guess, you know, I don't know as much about grading Pokemon cards. But yeah, I mean, that takes anywhere between, you know, three months, six months, nine months. It depends on who you're sending it with. And to be quite honest, I think they live in Texas. They're like either in Dallas, Austin, or in Houston. So I need to figure out where they're actually from because I heard that you can also drive there with a very valuable card and they'll do it on site. So 
why do we need eight version or seven? What, what did I say? Eight, yeah, five, five non-foil and free foil. Why do we need eight different versions of Piper of the Swarm? A 25 cents rare card on Card Kingdom. Imagine a store carrying eight different versions of the same card at eight different price points. Remember, like it's not like all eight of these cards have the same price. They're going to go up and down, up and down. I just don't understand how this can be a economically feasible model. Not every store is going to carry eight versions of the same card, but at the same time, magic players are very picky. Let me tell you about this. You know, I remember uh, trying to sell, the guy was trying to sell a play, I was trying to sell a play set of Underground Seas, and the dude looked through like every single card in my image and he didn't really want to buy them. He just wanted to see like, oh, what, how do you grade? Do you grade consistently? I was like, dude, why don't you just look at the underground seas, the cards you're buying? So magic players are sometimes very strange and incredibly smelly. The dude was so smelly, dude. Like I was like, oh, I'm going to barf. Luckily, I no longer have a retail store for magic. I still have a retail store for anime, which attracts obviously not dudes. I mean, it's Anime Plus, K-pop, so our, demogra Elsa, our demographic is 80% female, which makes it the store smell a lot better. And plus, they're not there for hours upon hours. They go, by, they go out, they go there, they buy these stuffed plus of... Uh, so there's like some cat that's really angry all the time, and she's like very popular. It's on Netflix. I, I watched it, like Agrisuto or something. And she sells really well now. So maybe it was like a second season. I don't know. But she's picking up uh, in terms of sales. Elsa, uh, I think the days of Elsa, I don't think Frozen 2 was as good as Frozen 1. So, yeah. But why do we have so many different versions of the same blanking card that was just printed in standard? How can you call yourself a collectible card game when you're forcing players to buy eight different versions of a crappy card? I used to pimp out my deck and, you know, it was really cool. Do you want the Russian foil? Do you want the original foil? Do you want, like, the old school 7th edition foil? Right? The, that's the valuable one. That's the beautiful Birds of Paradise. Or do you want the 8th edition promo mana of Birds of Paradise? Even Birds of Paradise had a plenty of really great options to choose from. But it didn't have 8 different options for a card that just was printed. So that's why Magic the Gathering is no longer collectible. There's just when there's just too much to collect. And I'm using this as an example because this card is not even very good. So it's not like it's a fetch land. Now, eight versions of the same fetch land, I mean, that would still be bad, but I could see like, yeah, there might be demand. There might be people who want to play set of this. And, but who wants this? It has eight different prices. Like, who is, like, is this a high, in high demand card? Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, it's so ridiculous that when you really consider it, it's a 25 cent rare with eight versions of it. Now, again, I could see a fetch land, a masterpiece fetch land. I mean, Misty Rainforest Masterpiece is one of the most stunning um, lands I've ever seen. But eight of them for a recently, it, it just still is, blows my mind. It just makes me like, dizzy thinking about like the logistics and your local game store now you might say oh some p players are not going to care what edition it is but i would ask you yeah they are going to care because you have 25 cents all the way to four dollars and if i have like a four dollar one and a 225 cent ones you know how magic players are they have ocd they want to match it up right and they always, they probably for this card, either want one of the most expensive version or they want one that is, you know, like a playset that all of them match up. And maybe I don't have that. Maybe I just have eight single copies of it. Good luck. And when you're hiring people, employees to work for you, a lot of them won't know which, which of these additions it is. Because they're not magic players. If you hired a non-magic player, and a lot of stores do this because, again, it's hard to find a really qualified magic employee and then pay them minimal wage, right? 
they're going to have difficulties identifying you know what card it is and then on top of this do you really want to buy eight so not only are you trying to sell eight different versions of the same card that has recently been printed and to a set ago you you also have to buy list eight different <laughs> copies of the same card how I, I mean back when i played in middle school i had a friend his name was brandon and he would collect a foil copy of every legend so if the legend had a foil uh, we play during urza saga it was a really good time to play magic especially if you want to collect legendary creatures now some of those le original legendary foils are incredibly expensive I haven't talked to him in a while, but I'm sure that he has a binder worth like close to five, ten thousand dollars because again, he collected every single legendary foil. But it came to a point where he just couldn't continue, so he gave up the hobby of magic altogether and he basically just put his binder away. You know, I really should find that binder because I remember uh, trading him a Captain Sisse foil and a Hannah foil, and then I would always because like foils were not. We didn't have ED8s back then, so that binder is just full of old school EDH foils. Like just tremendously valuable. But nowadays, I mean, this card is not good. Why do we need eight copies of it? Or eight different versions of it? And each version has a different price tag on it. That's insane. Hi guys.